Give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's faithful love endures forever. Welcome this morning. Um, I have a couple of announcements that are on the back of the bulletin. Uh, we'll be having a Monday Thursday service Thursday at 6.30 here at the church. Um, and then on Easter Sunday next week, um, we will have breakfast at 10 before our worship service. So that's always a lot of fun. And um, the more breakfast casseroles, the better. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention about the bulletin today is um, the benediction hymn at the very end, Ubi Caritas. Um, you can sing it either in English or Latin or go back and forth, however you want to do it. Um, so don't, don't be worried if you hear some people singing in Latin and you don't want to do that, you don't have to. Um, all right, are there other joys and concerns this morning? Yes. Um, so uh, next Sunday, along with breakfast, we're also having our um, yeah, taking a, a uh, offering for one great hour of sharing. That's those fish banks. If you've been doing your fish bank, you can just bring the fish bank in as is and put that in. Or if you want to make a check out, you would make it to the church and then on the member line put one great hour of sharing. Um, you can just do it that way. If you really like an envelope, there'll there will be some by the bulletins there are today, and there will be next week. So, um, but just uh, the fish banks are next week. And there's right here on the table in the oh, and there are some more fish banks in both places, both places if you both forgot a bank and you want one. Okay. Um, so, Gloria, do you want to mention about the strawberry festival? Yeah. Uh, Thornwell will be having a strawberry festival. We've all been invited, and it's uh, it's going to be really a lot of it and things involved. There'll be a hay ride and all kinds of activities going on. And I think there's some kind of um, vendors that come in, or not vendors necessarily, but people that make things and stuff like that. But it seems like a really nice day. If we could get a group to go, it would be great. It's on the fifteenth of April, and um, I just think. It's something that we're supporting that we can actually see what's going on and I think you get a better feeling for it when you can actually see all the wonderful things that are happening there. So there's flyers on the back telling you when it is and then also that gives you an idea of uh, parking and pricing and things like that. So, so pick one up. Is it see the flyers. So that's the information and then there is a ticket pricing. So both of these will, could be in the North X, and I think there's there's some in the back as well. No, I just there's them all there. Okay. Right. Very good. Yes. Um, and next Sunday, are we doing the cross with flowers? Yes, we are. So bring your take, flowers. Bring flowers. Um, and also, last week after church, Gloria and I were talking mm -hmm. about just outreach, and we talked about the idea of maybe quarterly or so sending cards to people who are friends of the church but aren't able to come anymore, like Joan, um, like Carolyn Bishop. Um, and so, to, and the session, I think we'll probably talk about it in your next meeting, but since these are Easter cards, we couldn't really wait. So um, I handed out five of them today. If you'll just, if you were one of the people who got one this time, thank you very much. Um, and just so, do whatever you want to, sign it on behalf, of, say you're you, but also just from the church also, and then put it in the mail. Okay, they're stamped and addressed already. And once the session talks about it, if we like that idea, uh, quarterly we'll do this um, just with a thinking of you part. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yes, Phil. Uh, we need to keep uh, Karen Huffman in our prayers. Uh, understand she let a cold get out of hand, okay. and she has uh, pneumonia both with lungs. Oh no, she is at home. Gloria, and help me out if I misstate anything. Uh, on antibiotics. But, uh, not a good situation. Thank you, Phil. Any other joys and concerns? Yes. So it's me again. And I had one left over, and I didn't know who it was for, it, so I just brought it along. I'm going to put Karen's name on the front, and, and at the end, we'll just have it at the back. 
If people want to sign it, it's an Easter card. We'll put it in the mail to Ruth Okay? Great. Thank you. Any more announcements this morning? Then let's begin worship by listening to the us to let go and to live out of control. When we learn to depend on God, we learn how to let go of control. Palm Sunday and the events of Holy Week were not what the people hoped for or imagined when they dreamed of a Messiah. Christ is doing a new thing among us, so lay down your cloaks, shout Hosanna, and risk following Christ all the way to the cross. As we extinguish this light, we let go of control. We let go of our assumptions, our own plans, our hopes, so that we can see Christ in our midst, transforming the world. Let us pray. Holy One, as we enter the coming days of darkness, remind us that you are the one who calls new life out of death, light out of darkness. Give us the strength to follow you to the cross. Amen. I, I'm really sorry because this should have been in joys and concerns. Um, because I didn't see anything come out about this this week. Um, Joanne Godwin um, passed away this week. Oh. Um, and so um, I do, 
Um, Thad was with her, and I think we, we all know that she had, um, th this had been coming. But um, he was with her, um, I think it was maybe Tuesday. Um, but I got the address for Thad uh, in Georgia, and um, I'll send it to Sue, and you can um, send it out to everybody. Um, so anyway, just wanted to let everybody know that. Sorry, sorry, I interrupted in the wrong place. But that's okay. Thank you. Please join me in the call to worship. People of God, on this wilderness journey, what will you eat? The word of the Lord is our daily bread. People of God, in this time of temptation, how will you live? Our trust is in the faithfulness of God. People of God, at the call to repent, whom will you serve? We worship the Lord our God alone. Accept our, ador our adoration and praise, and grant that we may never fail to offer you the service of our lives. Give us grace to walk this Holy Week journey from palms to passion in somber remembrance and with hopeful expectation of things to come. Stir Easter life deep within our hearts so that we may live as flawed but forgiven people and use us to usher in your kingdom justice, humility, and compassion for all. Amen.
stand as you are able or to stand in spirit and join me in the prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that with the crowds who hailed you as king, waving palm branches and voicing praises, we shout Hosanna. But like them, we quickly and often are disappointed when you ask us to accept things and people that run contrary to our expectations. We demand justice for ourselves, yet we are often blind to the ways we impede justice for all. Forgive us, Lord. Give us courage to follow in your way and become agents of your most unusual kingdom. Amen. God's love, which endures for us, and it endures forever in Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I am passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. 
And our second reading comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Hear now these words from the Word. When they had come near Bethlehem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This, will this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were, uh, were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. In Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And our third reading comes to us from the letter that Paul writes to the church in Philippi. Here again, these words from the word. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So, good news. Guess what? It's tax season. <laughs> we look forward to tax season in the same way that most people look forward to Christmas and Easter. <laughs> <laughs> you can't write that on paper and have it sound funny. It is. It's tax season when nobody looks forward to figuring out how much they owe the government and how much they're going to try to make sure not as much money is taken away. So you have certain tax write-offs, and it varies from person to person. One tax write-off that I often hear when we're preparing our taxes is, do you have any unreimbursed mileage? I imagine many of you have had that question posed to you, how much mileage is unreimbursed? And you may be thinking, I don't know where this guy is going. <laughs> but there is a point. Because I started to look at how much mileage Jesus put in unreimbursed. It's 3,125. That's the estimate. 3,125 miles since he began his ministry. He begins, of course, in Bethlehem, and he starts out in Nazareth. And you hear the name mentioned in a part of our passage, Nazareth, which was basically like Nowheresville, almost like Redneckville. It was a small town with nobody. So when we hear the declaration that Jesus of Nazareth is coming, it would have been heard on very different ears. 
Oh, you know, that guy from Townville. <laughs> <laughs> that guy coming from Anderson. You know, not a big place. Kind of busy, but Jesus, what are you going to do? That's how it would have been heard. But as Jesus' ministry starts to develop, we find him going from town to town, healing people who are on the margins, talking about God's reign in the world, over and against the religious authorities, over and against the Roman rulers of the day. You can just imagine how much it really unnerved people in power to hear him talking about the reign of God above the emperors who are the sons of God and the Pharisees who are the trusted leaders in the religious community who should not just religious authority but political authority as well. But he didn't come into the world, Jesus didn't, simply to say that you've got it all wrong. He came into the world to show us what God gets right. That God understands love and grace beyond measure. That God understands healing as a sign of devotion to the world. A God who understands love, even when love is unrequited. <clears throat> you see that Jesus is the exhibition of it. God incarnate, the one who shows us fully who God is. So Jesus, after doing such wonderful works, healing people, advocating for the marginalized. He comes in to Jerusalem on a foal and a donkey. <coughs> and the crowds are cheering him. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to heaven. This is the one we've been waiting for. Hosanna. So on the one hand, the crowd gets it right. They understand that God's work is done by this healing and this resolve, which includes healing on the Sabbath. There's a, an abundance of breaking the rules, but not simply for the sake of rule breaking. It is breaking the rules because humanity matters to God. And so, the crowds cheer. And they cheer as if we would, as a culture. We're always yearning for the underdog. At every stage of life, I just imagine each of us is re-watching the Rocky movie. He's coming back. He's coming back. It's a story that we tell time and time again in different ways. You made it despite all the odds. You made it. We celebrate this. You did wonderful things, great things for people who were in distress. So not only did you make it, you did it for the sake of other people. How great is that? It's like a made-for-TV movie. And so they shout, Hosanna. And they're coming in, and Jesus, Jesus already knows that his end is at hand, that the gears are, of violence are starting to turn, and that his life will be crushed by those gears. But it's something that the crowd 
optimistically does not cheer because there's something that the crowd doesn't believe about itself. Crowds don't believe that they're fickle. I'd love to see a protest of people saying, I'm not sure if I really believe in this cause. That's the way crowds are. They come forward with such optimism and cheer that their way of thinking is the right way and it will be that way for the entirety of their existence. My friends, I think we are like this crowd. Normally on Palm Sunday, it's a celebration where palm branches are laid down on the communion table, where life is celebrated because we're glad that Jesus, as he enters into Jerusalem, is entering also into our lives. And we cheer. I'm sorry it doesn't stay that way. Because the crowds turn on Jesus. Later this week, we will have a Monday Thursday service. I hope that each of you can attend. And if you're with us on YouTube or on Zoom, I hope that you'll join us by way of those, those apps. Because what we are shifting toward is the recognition that we don't have things quite as together as we thought. We got it right, recognizing that Jesus is coming into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hosanna, God save us. But then, that same crowd, will turn on Jesus, on what God is doing. And it seems like we have a huge history of that, of turning, changing on what God wants for the world. It happened in the Garden of Eden, and it's happening again as Jesus enters Jerusalem. There's one quotation from Ann Williams that I enjoy immensely. Hear this. She writes in her reflection entitled, Between Parades. We're good at planning. Give us a task force and a project and we're off running. No trouble at all. Going to the village and finding a cult and even negotiating with its owners is right up our alley. And how we love a parade. In a frenzy of celebration, we gladly focus on Jesus and generously throw our coats and palms in his path. And we can shout praise loudly enough to make the Pharisees complain. It's all so good. It is between parades that we don't do well. From Sunday to Sunday, we forget our hosannas. Between parades, the stones will have to shout because we don't. Perhaps for us, during this Holy Week, we can stand in the tension between celebration and crucifixion. knowing that it's a struggle to be faithful in all things. We stand between two places. What is it as crowd members that keeps us from moving forward? What is it that keeps us from following in the ways of Jesus? It could be inconvenience. 
that's a strong point. It could be we don't have time. That could be it. But I think Jesus understands something about the nature of the human soul and the human condition. I think it's fear. I think that's what Jesus knew about the human condition. 365 times in the Bible is the phrase, do not fear. 365 times. That's one phrase of do not fear each day of our lives. As if you didn't already know how many days were in the year. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says it ten times until we get to Palm Sunday. Why would Jesus keep saying, do not fear? Do not fear. I think it's because Jesus knew that fear is the thing that prevents us from stepping forward in faith. Perhaps the crowds fear Roman reprisal. Perhaps they fear being socially ostracized by the Pharisees. Perhaps they fear getting it wrong. So as we approach this Holy Week, a question we might answer or strive to answer is what is it that we fear individually? What do we fear about moving in the ways of Jesus? May we consider, meditate, pray on how we may be faithful as we see Jesus going to death, even death on a cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I now invite you to stand as you are able and join me in affirming what it is that we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Dear Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
friends, as we continue in worship, consider this. The blessings with which God has given to you. I invite you to dedicate your time, your talents, and even your money to the purposes of God, which are worked out not only through your life, but through the purpose of this church. Let us continue in our worship with the tithes and our offerings. Get it wrong. But Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You made us in your image, setting us in your world to love and serve you, and to live in peace with your whole creation. From generation to generation you have guided us, sending prophets to turn us from wayward paths into the way of righteousness. Out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son among us to redeem us and to be the way to eternal life. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. As one of us, he knew our joys and sorrows and our struggles with temptation. He was like us in every way except sin. In him, we see what you created us to be. Though blameless, he suffered willingly for our sin 
Though innocent, he accepted death for the guilty. On the cross, he offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the life of the world. By his suffering and death, he freed us from sin and death. Risen from the grave, he leads us to the joy of new life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O Lord, upon these gifts, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all of our baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, in the way of Christ. Give us courage this Palm Sunday as we face Holy Week, that we may be reminded to take up our cross and in full reliance upon your grace to follow him. Help us to love you above all else and to love our neighbor as well as our enemies, demonstrating that love in deed and word in the power of your Holy Spirit. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever. And now, O oh Lord, we pray the prayer you taught us to pray when we gather together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of our Lord's arrest, Jesus Christ took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, saying to them and to us now, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our Lord until he comes again in glory. And come he shall. We will be taking a communion by intention, which means I invite you. I invite you to come down last aisle first and to come forward in each successive aisle to come next. Take a piece of bread, dip it into the cup, and put it into your mouth, and return to your seat by way of the outside aisles. I hope and I pray that as you approach this table that you will understand that it is a table of grace, that there is no amount of worthiness that makes you a participant. It is Christ's worthiness for the sake of the world. So come taste and see that the Lord is good.
are called to a life that is sacrificial. But it's not sacrificial simply for us to punish ourselves. It is sacrificial so that we may love one another. And by loving one another, we can move beyond these walls and love the world just as God loves the world. May we move forth with that mission in mind. But the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may these be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.